Business World. I'm your host Siddharth, and on today's edition of BW Hot Wires, we have Mr. Naveen Munjal, Managing Director, Hero Electric, with us. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Siddharth. Pleasure being here today. Uh, so let's start a conversation with uh, the biggest topic around COVID-19 pandemic. So tell us, uh, how has the COVID-19 pandemic uh, affected Hero Electric's uh, business operations in India? Um, see, when we got into COVID-19. Let me start by this thing. So there was a lot of uncertainty about what this whole virus is and how it's going to affect us all, and how, what the impact is going to be and how long that impact is going to be. Nobody really knew what what is going to happen, what the future holds. Are there any vaccines which are going to come out? Is there any cure for it? Nothing at all. So when we began off, we just began with a three-week lockdown at that point, and we didn't know what's there at the other side. So what we did first. Uh, very soon. I mean, we started. I think on the 25th of March. By first week of April, we said, "Okay, we've got. We are in lockdown. We are in a situation which is not a very good situation. It's not having a very good impact on everybody. But how do we turn that into a positive impact? How do we really make that positive for all the people who are working with us, for us, in the uh, employees, our stakeholders, our dealers, and everybody else? So very quickly, what we started doing actually is we started training." And engaging with all our uh, uh, people working in, in our company on a day-to-day -day basis, on a regular basis, business as usual. Now let's use technology for that. That was the first thing that we did. Then we realized a lot of them were actually sitting in remote locations, in very small, in a one-room apartment somewhere, and away from their families, etc. Can't come back. There's no way of coming back. So that's going to have an effect on the mental health. So the first, the next thing we started doing is talking to them. Putting a buddy with them from one of the who was there with his family, etc., started doing things like yoga, uh, music classes for them, and other uh, other sessions. In two months, we had done over twenty five hundred modules of training, which was cross skill, cross training, upskilling, etc., the whole bunch of training. The next thing we started doing actually is engaging our dealer network again, because you know when you're sitting in, when you're watching negative news day in and day out. There's a very strong chance you can go into a downward spiral. कि अब तो हम मर गए, we are dead, we are finished. We don't know if there's going to be recovery after this. We don't know if the industry is going to recover after this. We said, look, this is a time where there's certainly certain negativity which is there, but there will be positivity. We are going to get out of it, and we are going to be winners coming out of this. So we have to look at it from a positive perspective. What can we really do to make it positive? So we started training up the dealers. Then we started doing online promotions for our, uh, for customers, etc. That yielded a lot of good results. Now, what happened in the process is very soon our whole network was extremely charged up. The whole intent in initially was just to charge them up so that they don't go into a downward spiral. But then sales also began happening. In fact, we when we went online, we were able to sell uh, over five times of what we did online last year in the full year. So the whole in it, the whole the energy came into the system, right from the staff, right to the dealers, down to the customers. But when we look at it from a standpoint, this there has been a silver lining around this whole pandemic. We have seen a lot of positive shoots coming out of it. Now, electric vehicles are. I mean, we as journalists, we have uh, we have been exposed to electric vehicles, but a normal customer, somebody who wants to buy a two wheeler, will. Never uh, would have actually tried an electric vehicle. So this kind of concept, where you actually educate the customer about the pros and cons of the vehicle, and he actually gets to really use it and charge it at his at his place. How much has this helped? And uh, is this the thing that you will be preferring going forward? See, it's been a tremendous help. So we've directly, or uh, within, we've directly reached out to tens of thousands of customers in the process. You've told them, you know, whoever wants to come has any answer questions that they want to answer. You want answers to. You don't know about electric mobility. We are here to talk to you about it. So customers, when they see the team coming there, they see the senior team coming and sitting in front and asking and answering all the questions, and not just giving a positive response. In some cases, you know, when they would ask us some questions where we didn't have a positive response, we would tell them that, you know, maybe this vehicle is not suitable for you because of the kind of performance that you're looking at. Maybe you should look at this kind of a vehicle. And we would also explain to them the benefits and the advantages or the disadvantages. That while you're buying this, be very clear that these are the uh, limitations that exist with electric mobility as against other forms of mobility. So we would give them a very clear picture and then let them decide. 
so what happened in this process when we were and our dealers were also there in the process so it wasn't the dealer versus online it wasn't the uh, there was no clash of offline and online here so we wanted to blend the two together because we are at the end of the day we are in automotive sector the vehicles that go out into the market they there are accidents there are problems that happen with them and we need them to be addressed the customer needs somewhere to go to and the dealer is the best place for him to do that so the dealer has to have interest in that sale which is happening so even though we sell online we route it through the dealers so the dealers are engaged right from the beginning right from the sale point and then the service and thereabouts so what we had found earlier is we have a very large repeat customer base so over 40% of our customers are either repeat customers or referral customers awareness is very very poor even now awareness is not really that large people have heard ki electric hai but uske beyond they have very limited they haven't tried it out and that's why we came out with some of these schemes or some of these promotions so going forward the way i see it is there's going to be a blend of offline and online which is going to happen we've already trained up our dealers in the process in the last we did about six sessions with the dealers alone teaching them digital skills because a lot of our dealers they've never really though they may go to social media they may go to digital platforms but they don't know how to really use them well they don't really know how to market to customers well so we taught them that this is how you market to your segment of customers this is how you talk to the customers this is the kind of information that you should be putting out there your sqls are such and such and that's how you come up with the advertising and uh, for this thing and this is how where you spend money and this is where you don't spend money kind of thing so we've trained up the dealers also so the dealers understood that it's not me versus online it's a blend if there's online sale happening i'm also benefiting from it if the company is talking directly to the customers initially the thought used to be that if the company is talking directly to the customers then the dealer feels alienated in this case the dealer was also feeling a part of the whole process because he was involved in it so we've involved uh, all the stakeholders we've reached out directly to the customers and going forward certain things are certainly going to a lot of things are certainly going to change uh, we no longer have to do a lot of these physical meetings any longer uh, we understand that the customers may or may not come to the dealerships as often as they used to earlier we understand that going forward social distancing will become a norm so we went in the dealer now about 80 over 85% of our dealer network is open and we engaged and we uh, sanitized all our dealer showrooms etc to be able to handle the customers when they're coming in so going forward a lot of things are going to change for the positive and that's what we are anticipating so i mean uh, when we had a word a few months back uh, when the first phase of lockdown was uh, announced you had said that i mean you're going to witness some unprecedented sales going forward uh, when the once the lockdown is lifted so uh, i mean what has been the response to your products and all have you witnessed unprecedented numbers if yes can you put uh, like uh, can you put the number to it like how many uh, units have you sold once the lockdown is lifted and uh, in the next few uh, months what is your uh, sales target so what we did uh, like i was saying you know we went out we reached the customers this is all during the lockdown period so this is not post lockdown this is prior to may 17th and uh, that time now we were, in the first promotion we were selling we were already marketing to the customers and we said we'll deliver them to you the vehicles to you you don't need to come to the showrooms uh once the lockdowns begin to open so as the lockdown began to open on the may 17th we started deliveries very soon as whichever areas were opening up we started delivering vehicles to customers we also what we also started doing actually that time is vehicles which had been standing now for a month and a half two months how the batteries are maintained and all the heat and everything so we went and we started servicing those vehicles for the customers as well in a lot of cases just to make sure that they are uh, in top shape now that period so when we launched our first promotion which was in mid april i think yeah so mid april to end of june in terms of sheer volume alone we had sold 5x or more than 5x 6 more than 6x of what we had sold last year online so the whole of last year in two and a half months we were able to sell about 6x of that online so we were able to do for example 5000 units and more than 5000 units and we are sitting on about 50000 inquiries right now which is just during the pandemic time and as we are opening up more and more sales are expanding sales are increasing 
So we have already seen a spike in sales here. And what we anticipate is that we're going to be minimum of what we were last year in terms of numbers this year uh, as well. So, uh, I mean, uh, as a follow up to my last question, a majority of the numbers are derived from which segment or which product and all and uh, which, I mean, uh, is it safe to assume that right now tier 2 and tier 3 cities are giving you more numbers because of uh, less containment zones than tier 1 cities? No, not necessarily. Of course, tier 2 and tier 3 are bigger because, you know, in terms of the sheer number of cities that exist are much, uh, much larger. And then on top of that, the, maybe the public infrastructure the log- is not as developed as it is for the uh, tier 1 or the metros. So there is a distinction there, that's, that's for sure. But we are getting numbers from all across the country. We are getting numbers from the south and we are getting numbers from the north. Uh, so it's a, that's pan-India. There is no... Uh, wherever we are pushing, so you know, for example, our, our, our uh, regional managers in east were saying that so we are not getting the right audience here, we need to push in a different manner. And so we changed our tactics there, we changed the way that we were marketing there and we started getting the numbers again. Okay, okay. So it's a matter of wherever we're going, wherever we're selling, wherever we're giving the right messaging to the customer, they are converting. In terms of the vehicles themselves, it's a, it's a across the range, but a large number of them are the city speed vehicles, which are in the speed of about 40-45 km speed. and. Uh, and the lower speed vehicles, which are for students, etc. Uh, sir, now we've spoken about a lot of things, but uh, <clears throat> there are reports which say that electric vehicles might be uh, bearing the brunt of this whole uh, crisis, global crisis, where companies do not have cash to spend on R&D and development. And uh, at the same time, the consumer sentiment is also low. People are not interested in buying big ticket items and electric vehicles are obviously expensive compared to a normal ICE engine uh, vehicles. What is your take on this? Uh, no, Siddharth, that's a misnomer. So if you look at it from a global perspective, the dip that we saw in the first few weeks of the COVID-19 and the lockdowns that were happening at a global level, the IC industry, the electric industry declined in a much less fashion than what was on the other side, on the IC side. So here, and when the tapering and when the growth began to happen, the growth in electric was faster than it was in all other categories. Now, numerous reasons for that. West is for a different reason. They're looking at the environment and other factors and ease of use, etc. Now in India, it's a, it's not... So like I said you know earlier that if you look at the same power of a vehicle, electric will always be more expensive, at least for the near foreseeable future at the same power. But do we really need the same power in our cities, in the congested cities? Especially when we are looking at a commuter segment, we may not require the same power, the same performance that you do for a larger motorcycle or a scooter that you have. So if you forego that and you're looking at a city speed vehicle, which is up to about 45, 50 kilometers an hour speed, works very well in our city environments, in our urban environments and also in the rural environment. When you look at those factors, we are cheaper than the IC engine. The batteries are cheaper. You charge the, the day-to-day usage is much cheaper. So if you calculate on a day-to-day basis, no matter what you're traveling, whether it's 10 kilometers or 30 kilometers a day, or even more than that, your running cost of electric is far, far, far lower than that of your IC engine vehicles. Sure, there is an issue when it comes into the premium segments. But what we anticipate is that when you get out of any financial crisis, your entry level is what starts to get picked up first. So it's always because people are are looking at vehicles which are convenient to use, easy to use. They don't have to go to petrol pumps and service centers, etc. Are friendly on the pocket to purchase and very friendly on the pocket to run the vehicle. And all of these boxes get ticked by electric mobility. So the consumers who understand it are really gravitating towards electric. There are some customers who say, you know, I want a very high performance bike, etc. And for them, maybe this is not the right product. Like if a person is looking at a sports car, then he wouldn't really look at a hatchback. He would probably be looking at a sports car. A hatchback or a sedan may not be the right product for him. It's the same same case here. So depending on what you choose, what you want, but for a large part of the commuter segment, for a large part of the delivery segment, for a large part of the people who are commuting and who are going back and forth, for them, electric makes absolute sense. 
right sir so now one question here uh you mentioned about your campaign where you are actually giving out your products to uh, for the uh, for the consumer to try it out that is consumer education are you a, uh, running any other campaigns during the uh, this whole lockdown and post lockdown situation where people can actually look at personal mobility and actually can consider an electric vehicle so we ourselves don't lease or finance the vehicles but uh, we have we work with a number of finance companies who are financing the vehicles for customers and that's already underway in fact we've just signed on one new one in the last few days as well so right now financing has been a huge problem but that is something that is getting addressed uh, as the volumes are increasing and numbers are increasing finance companies are also nbfcs and finance companies are also looking at us in a more serious manner that it makes sense to start financing these electric vehicles also because of the technology that we can put in the vehicle uh, telematics geofencing etc it's very easy to control or lock the vehicle should the person not pay his uh, emis or his lease uh, lease price etc so you can actually just completely remotely lock the vehicle so all those technologies are there in the, the if they need to be deployed so right now we are running a promotion which is a buddy scheme so if somebody is referring a vehicle uh, if he is referring a customer his friend or somebody then that other person is getting certain benefit and this person is getting non merit monetary benefit in the process so we are running that and we are getting a very good traction in that as well so we keep on changing the promotions that we have the kind of schemes or the the way that we sell to customers the objective being even when we did the first uh, the 3 day uh, scheme for example the whole idea was to get people to try out the vehicles so you bought the vehicle if you didn't like the experience of it you could actually come back and return the vehicle to us without a problem and nobody really did that so there is right now we've got the fourth promotion which is going on and we're going to keep on innovating and coming out with new promotions as we go along as well so every uh, business is there to earn profit right and uh, i'm sure you are also with the same purpose so when uh, so are you earning profits right now if no when do you intend to earn profits and when uh, will uh, when do you think your industry will become a booming industry like something on the line, lines of uh, it industry if i may put it i know it's not comparable to it industry but something when do you think your industry will be a booming industry so we are we have substantial and healthy gross margins on the vehicle every model that every vehicle that we sell there is a healthy gross margin which is in line with what the automotive industry earns the only issue here is our scale our scale is sub scale at this point of time so in automotive you've got to spend extensively in getting the creating the network getting your service network etc putting everything in place and then profits happen at a later date when you get the volumes so this is seeding of the industry and volumes will come in and once volumes come in we will be a profitable company uh for us i think we're going to be profitable in the next one and a half two years so it's not that far off at a net level as well right now we are at a gross level and like i said we don't sell any vehicle which is which is at a loss at a gross level at all we don't we just don't get into that kind of a business now let's come and look at uh, when this industry is really going to be flourishing uh this is a process so there is got to be a stage when it begins when it begins to make sense and begins to take off i think we are now at that cusp of that stage i see this industry growing from here on there are numerous tailwinds that we have now one of them if you look at it from the policies themselves government policies now we had fame one now we've got fame two going the amount of money that's been earmarked even though for our business we cal when we calculate we don't take subsidies as a part of the revenue we are not taking subsidy we don't build a business around subsidies because those are here tomorrow they may not be here tomorrow uh, today they may not be here tomorrow and we don't want to rely a business on subsidies but if you look at the policies themselves there are huge tailwinds in favor of electric mobility now various reasons one is of course the oil importation second is the environment itself that and we have to move into cleaner forms of and if you look at our air pollution that we have in a place like delhi which ranks amongst the top which is the most polluted area in the world which has been the most polluted area in the world now since covid we are i mean our air has cleaned dramatically i mean we'll probably now have a problem if we go back to the old ways and suddenly we'll have that you know we've gotten used to clean air now what is going to how are we going to behave there 
Uh, that said, uh, I think we've begun to change. The whole industry has begun to change. It's only a matter of time because before this becomes a very meaningful and a large sector to reckon with. Sir, uh, I mean, if I'm not wrong, I mean, you are not uh, able to build the product uh, at hundred percent indigenization because. Uh, as you have maintained earlier, that you still need some part for the lithium-ion battery. So, when can we see the lithium-ion battery? Uh, some in-house development of uh, in-house production of lithium-ion battery development from your end, and uh, will when uh, can we expect a hundred percent localized battery uh, by by Hero Electric? See, we are not. Uh... Our business model is not for us to get into the battery manufacturing. So we will probably, in the near foreseeable future, we will not get into battery manufacturing ourselves. Battery manufacturing or assembly, assembly is not that specialized a job, but battery manufacturing, cell manufacturing is a highly, highly specialized job. And no company in the world actually does that. No automotive company in the world does that right now. So when you look at this whole space, the whole ecosystem of electric mobility, either you can be a technology player, or you could be a supplier, or you could be an automotive company, or you could go into services like charging infrastructure, etc. For you to have a play in all of these baskets means you've got to be a multi-billion dollar company. All of them having separate teams and separate, because the skill set is totally different. So we, like I said, you know, we are never going to get into cell manufacturing ourselves. We will rely on other specialist companies to do that. For them to manufacture cells in India, would mean that they have to get certain volume. It's a chicken and egg situation. The volume that exists in this industry right now are too small for them to justify a full-fledged cell manufacturing facility. And unless you have a very large cell manufacturing facility, you're not going to get the, it's not going to be commercially viable for you. So we, we are going to keep focusing on the vehicles and giving customer an outstanding experience with the vehicles, keep focusing on the service network that we are building, the dealer network, online selling, <coughs> Uh, B2B selling, working with B2B customers, which is a very, very important part of our uh, overall business model and how to make this all viable and how to make this all exciting for customers. That's what we are going to work on. Uh, cell manufacturing for us, it doesn't provide us the value that a customer is going to really see that way. Sir, uh, with companies running short on cash, running really lean, in the current situation, uh, do you think uh, there will be some cuts in marketing spending or do you think a crisis demands more uh, focus on marketing? I would go for a hybrid model between the two. So I don't think I don't think cutting back on marketing is the answer actually completely. But do you continue marketing in the same manner as what you were doing earlier? Possibly not. So I think what will happen here and what we've seen at least in our case is a change, a shift of marketing, the way that we were marketing earlier, a, tr a substantial shift. Suddenly we've see, gone a lot more online, we've gone a lot more digital, suddenly we've gone a lot more on social media. We are relying on platforms which uh, we weren't relying on to that extent earlier. Sure, we were doing online marketing earlier as well, but not to the extent that we are doing now. Now the focus is there because people, see if we look at people, how are they engaged? Are they really uh, people have not really been reading newspapers, the physical newspapers, so to speak. Okay, they're looking at it in a digital manner, but they haven't really been reading it. So print has taken a beating there. But whereas we look at online the consumption of uh, media, whether it is on uh, you know iPads and te other technology, other uh, 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 phones and computers, etc., that has gone up tremendously. Social consumption of social media, consumption of digital media has gone up hugely. And that is, so I think there's going to be a blend going forward. So people may not, at least if I can tell you from our perspective, I don't know what other company's strategies are. Our strategy for marketing is certainly going to change. So we are looking at more individual marketing. We are looking at more using AI in marketing as well, where you're targeting particular customers. So we are going to be looking at those kind of technologies. So now, uh... Tell us, uh, what are the pain points that you think uh, the Indian electric vehicle industry is uh, having right now? Um, numerous pain points. So, like I said, you know, there is, uh, so one of the primary factors which has been a big problem earlier has been lack of financing. 
So when we look at our counterparts IC, majority of the vehicles are financed, but when you look at electric, the financed vehicles were less than 5%. Now there's two ways to look at it, because it didn't exist earlier and yet we had growth, substantial growth. And that means that whenever it does happen, we're going to see a huge catabolic of growth. A huge uh, growth is going to go many fold simply because of financing coming into play, which is a very important factor in the purchase, uh, in the purchase process. The second factor, which is a very important factor, is lack of awareness. There is still lack of awareness amongst people. And this is something that we've heard from tens of thousands of people that we've interacted with, where they're saying, you know, we've heard about electric mobility, but we've never tried it out. So unless they've tried it out, they don't know what experience it is. And if they're earlier, if somebody has bought a local lead acid, low speed vehicle product, which gave them problems, then that gets established in their mindset. So how do you break them out of that mindset and get them to switch to a product which is far superior than what existed about 8-10 years back? So that also, that change is big. So when we talk about even the environment, for example, one of the one of, one of the things that we've been telling the government, that when you're talking about, say, Swachh Bharat program, you're talking about an environment cleanliness program. In that, why are you not talking about air pollution as well? So you should maybe include electric mobility and clean mobility as a part of Swachh Bharat. Now, so there are numerous factors. People don't, for example, they still haven't got the hang of uh, the resale value of an electric vehicle once it comes to the end of life cycle. The government of India has recently come out with this Atma Nirbhar uh, program, like which is also known as Make in India 2.0. So, what are the takeaways? I mean, what do you? Uh, I mean, how uh, does the EV industry going to benefit out of it? And uh, I mean, uh, uh, has the government adequately addressed your concerns? Uh, Abhishek, this program, so Make in India, is part of the program. Yeah. It's a it's a good program. So it's certainly a good push to going into localization, to yeah. making and self reliance, etc. But we this these things take time. This is a process which takes a long time before it will actually, we will begin to see results. And so what we need to have for that is a long-term policy to say that, yes, we want to, uh, we want to have our local manufacturing, etc. And this is the way that we're going to get there. So we should know what is the end result, which is required. It's not possible for us to do it in a very short span of time for any industry, forget our industry, it's for any industry in a very short span to suddenly change supply base and to start seeing it's not it takes it takes a long time for to create a vendor base for any industry and we've seen that across other industries as well where they've been in existence for decades and yet they are reliant on a lot large part of reports now whether it's from a neighboring country or from other that doesn't matter so here also in electric mobility uh, it's good that we are getting self-reliant but these are things which will take time. It will it will take time to really create up the supply chain here. And once it's established, it's established. So now uh, the current sentiment in the country is about boycotting China. So uh, now there are pros and cons to that. But uh, do you think this particular movement or this particular situation actually is a good thing for uh, Indian OEMs to step up and uh, start? Let me not get into what's happening with other countries, but let me just talk about India itself. There, of course, is a huge opportunity for Indian OEMs to step up in this sector, in the electric vehicle sector. This sector, when we look at it, this EVs, uh, at a global level, is fairly nascent still. Some of the European markets are mature, no doubt about it. But at the same time, that maturity is also only about 10 years old. This whole industry globally is only 15, 18, 19 years old. It's not though electric came in even before IC engine when we, but let's not go back into historical this thing. But in terms of sheer commercialization, it's in the last 10, 12 years where it's the markets have really began. So from that perspective, even though they're far ahead of India, but yet the markets are still growing. They're still at growth stage. We haven't reached a level of maturity yet. So there exists huge opportunities for Indian companies to actually look at manufacturing in India, creating a supply chain for the global markets. 
in the electric vehicle space. I believe that India can have a very strong role to play. We've just got to get our long-term policies in place and properly and with a very single-minded focus that we are going to support even if it's international, if it's exports, for example, what do you really need? You need support in terms of if you look at the solar industry. Solar industry had a substantial amount of support in terms of subsidies, etc. earlier. Here right now, because of volume and because of localization, your costs are going to increase. So you need to offset those costs. If our costs are going to go up as against other competition in the world, people are not going to buy. So we have to be price in terms of price competitive as well. And that can only happen by volume that we get. And that volume can only happen if we have the policies in place and if we... So it's a, it's a, it's a cycle. So one thing will lead to another. And India, certainly, we have to focus on quality and we have to focus on building up a supply chain, which is world class. And so no compromise there. And then we have a substantial uh, opportunity, for sure. Fine. Uh, so, uh, when, uh, we, when we met at the Auto Expo and when I walked into your stall, I saw a very snazzy looking bike and all. You were sitting with some executives and all. I mean, uh, when will that bike, uh, which was unveiled at the Auto Expo, come over to India? So why not, I mean, uh, democratize that technology and, uh, I mean, uh, flood it in the market and sell it. I mean, maybe it can be a game changer for Euro Electric. See, the, what we had actually done at Auto Expo was to showcase some of these products and test the market on how these products, what the reaction is. The product reaction, the reaction from customers, press, media, everybody else was coming in was fantastic. was very, very good. That said, when you go into a product like that, your initial purchase price also becomes extremely high and the product running cost also becomes extremely high. Now, both are high, so it does not have any economic, it does not make any economic sense. It becomes a lifestyle product. There is a market for that, no doubt about it, at that price point. But nevertheless, we felt that right now, post-COVID or during COVID, you know, this decision we took, that let's push back these plans uh, for a while. Simply because if you look at, you know, the market at that kind of price point is very, very small. And there's no point for us to be in a, as it is, a small industry, and then to go into a niche in that small industry. So in the, in the market like India, if you can't generate volumes, then it makes you know, sense, it makes no, it doesn't really make sense for us. So let's get the base down. Let's get the base, which is what we're already working on. And we have a decent base, which is already there. We have over 300,000 vehicles, which we've sold. And on top of that, these other vehicles, lifestyle vehicles can come into play. So which uh, these products, which we would have launched possibly by the end of this year, may get pushed back by a year, simply because of all these issues that have happened and certainly it would be made in India. It's, uh, there's the, it's the reason for not launching is not because of componentry coming in from anywhere else, but it's simply because that market is so small, uh, it doesn't justify the level of investments that were required at that point, that would be required right now. Uh, so, so there's a thing about electric vehicles, you know, a normal mechanic can, can work on a diesel engine vehicle, can work on a petrol engine vehicle. And you can probably take your car anywhere and get it fixed. But with electric vehicles, this is a totally different thing. So what about, uh, what is your thoughts on the skill development for uh, electric vehicles? I'm glad you asked me this. So we have a concept of, called PGO, Preferred Garage Owner, who are these roadside mechanics who are fixing, uh, who fix away a tire puncture and some minor problems that happen. So we have actually, uh, the last couple of years, we've been training up these people. Now, earlier it used to happen by a physical camp that we used to do. So our trainers would go and there would be a few hundred of these work uh, mechanics who would come in and we would give them tea and mati and samosa and all of that stuff. And we would train them, we would take them through the whole process, depending on what part of the country was, the language would be changed accordingly. And we would train them on fixing electric mobility in the, our vehicles. And it's not just applicable to our vehicles, it's also applicable to com uh, competition vehicles. But the point is to, for them to understand electric mobility. Now what we've done since this COVID began, we're still training them, but now we're training them online. And that's working pretty well. So in the process, we've already done, I think about 6,000 uh, people we've trained up in the process. Sir, what is your uh, plans and strategy for Hero Electric in the next 6 to 12 months? 
we are really going to start seeing growth in the electric mobility going forward from here. So our plan is that we are going to continue pushing e-mobility both for consumers and for B2B. So we are right now working towards localization, which is already underway, which has been underway since a long time. We are working towards further improving the vehicles for our customers to make them better uh, geared for the conditions that we have in India. We are making our vehicles more uh, in line with what we heard from the customers when we did all those uh, online uh, conversations. So that constant change is already happening. So we've documented all of that and now implementations are happening and yet at the same time growing the industry. So we are looking at it from a very, very positive standpoint that no matter what happens, we are going to continue pushing this and we are going to continue growing this industry. Great, sir. Thank you for talking to us, sir. Thank you, Siddharth. Thank you, Abhishek. Pleasure being here. Thank you for having me.